Getting into college is more complicated than ever before. College costs have more than doubled over the last 10 years, and helping your kids pay for college shouldn't affect your retirement planning. You need a college coach more than ever before. Let's join Jeff Morant, author of How to Pay for College Without Going Broke, and the host of the CollegeFundingCoach.com podcast. Hello, my name is Jeff Moran. I'm a certified college planner with collegefundingcoach.com. We've been helping parents and students with college planning since 2004. We want to mention if you have any questions about this or any of our other podcasts, go to collegefundingcoach.com and at the top of the page, click schedule a meeting and we'd be happy to help. You're really going to enjoy today's podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about CLEP and DSST test. And we have a special guest, Mason Aximit. Uh, Mason is a writer, a coach, a filmmaker who discovered a way to test out of his bachelor's degree in just over one year for under $10,000. Again, as I said at the beginning, this is going to be a fun podcast. In 2017, he utilized, which many of you on the podcast are probably not familiar with, CLEP test, DSST exams, some other methods, uh, other sources to test out of 78 credit hours and received his bachelor's degree at age 19. After graduation, he published a book titled The One-Year Diploma. And again, we encourage you to, to take a look at it. We're going to put links in our emails and, and we're going to put a special link in our website for, uh, for Mason. But that book is available on Amazon.com. And his second book was entitled, is entitled Start Your Career Without Student Debt. You all know how we feel about debt, and that's also available on Amazon. Mason offers private coaching sessions to help students with their degree plan. As you know, we're college planners, and, and, and choosing a degree, choosing a career path uh, is so important. But creating, and, I, and Mason, I love the word, creating your degree plan and how to test out as, as many classes as possible. And lastly, before we uh, bring Mason on, is uh, he's working on a documentary to bring awareness to these various testing programs while working with inner city kids to test out of their degrees uh, while still there in high school. Wow. Mason, welcome to our podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Um, just real quick, there's only one book. There's not two. So oh, it's, the One Year Diploma, Start Your Career Without Student Loan Debt is the subtitle of that book. Oh, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Because I had asked you in the in, before we started, uh, was the second book on Amazon? I misunderstood. So let me oh, make sure you all hear that. The One Year Diploma available on Amazon.com. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm going over to that. Uh, and again, it... Uh, it, it uh, I'm looking at the cover, um, and again, it's available on Kindle as well as uh, audiobook, which I'm a big believer in audiobooks, and I've been using them for years. So, so again, Mason, thank you. Welcome to our podcast. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Well, let's start off with the basics. What is a CLEP test? Um, so a CLEP test is a, basically an AP exam. It is a class or a test that will get you – college credit for taking the test. Um, however, the major difference between an AP test versus a CLEP test is that CLEP tests are completely multiple choice, um, and you only need a 70% to pass, and it's on a pass-fail basis. So with CLEP tests, with like an AP test, I took four AP exams um, throughout my life, and you had to, I had to study for like months on end for them, and I didn't pass any of them. But with a CLEP test, I would study for about four or five days, take the test, and I would pass almost every time. Wow, exciting. And again, the uh, CLEP test, and we're talking about the various ones, CLEP test is administered, owned, and administered by College Board, the granddaddy that, that also owns the ACT and, and, and again, administers and owns uh, uh, AP, uh, which, again, I think everybody, all of our listeners are familiar with AP. So, and by the way, it, again, you say you studied for four days. Holy cow, what's the average, um, uh, if you quantify this and put it into numbers, a CLEP test is going to eliminate uh, having to take a, a three-unit, three-credit uh, class, isn't it? Yes. 
So if you take five CLEP tests, you would be um, basically testing out of a semester of college. Exactly. That's what I wanted to hear our, our listeners hear, and that's incredible. And again, as we talk about, uh, it, it, and I, I think it's important to put a put a pers- put it into perspective, put a number on it. It's like like clepping out, like testing out at least a semester, maybe even a whole year of uh, of college. Is that a good way of saying? It? Yeah, I mean, and there's there's no limit to that. There are colleges that accept 120 credit hours of transfer. So there are plenty of schools that you can apply to and go to and transfer over your entirety of all of your college if you really focused on how to schedule and map out your tests. And that's what one of the things you do as a private coach, and we'll talk about that at the end. Because, again, the students are thinking, well, does this school, does that school? We know that uh, uh, of the 2,700 schools that we keep track of in our database and part of Part of our uh, our services, uh, not all of them accept CLEP tests, right? No, um, there's a lot of te- schools that don't accept CLEP exams. I know Harvard, I'm pretty sure, doesn't accept any of them. Right. Um, and then there's like in in state schools. So I know CU Boulder only accepts like 12 credit hours of transfer. So that's not even a semester. But there are plenty of schools that accept 90 credit credit transfer hours up to 120 credit transfer hours, which right. about is 120. Incredible. And as another uh, quick question, how many times can you retake the test? Uh, Unlimited. You just have to wait three months. So Ah. if I I don't pass in December, I have to wait till March. So take take some planning, take some uh, planning ahead. The other piece that you talked about in your book is the DSST exams. What are they? So CLEP is for your base level courses, your 100, 200 level courses, so freshman and sophomore year of college, where DSST is the same thing, but it's for junior, senior. So it's going to be much more specific on your subjects, where a CLEP test would be like psychology 101, where, and a DSST test would be like uh, integral psychology of childhood development or something, like more specific um, a more specific course. However, I find DSST t- exams actually easier because with CLEP exams, you have five multiple choice options. On DSST, you have four. Oh, boy. You're obviously the expert. And, uh, again, encourage our listeners to go to College Board and then uh, click in the reference CLEP. And, by the way, tell us what the uh, CLEP stands for, the acronym. Uh, College Level Examination Programming. Simple as that. And so, again, I'm looking at the College Board, the part of the website, and they break it into history and social sciences, uh, composition, literature, science, mathematics, uh, business, uh, uh, world languages, uh, a lot of the overlap of AP. But yet again, uh, it, would you – I, I heard you say at the beginning, and would you say it, say it without any hesitation that the CLEP tests are much easier than the AP test? Oh, no hesitation whatsoever. It's, it's not even close. It's, I mean, I, when I would take a CLEP exam, I passed on the first try 88% of the time, um, and the second try I passed 100% of the time, where on my AP exams I took four of them and I didn't pass any of them. So it, it, it's much, much, much easier. Yes. Very, very cool. Uh, again, there's a listing in there in the uh, college board, and, again, we encourage – uh, our listeners to uh, to hire um, Mason, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end, where he can actually spend some time and uh, help create that lesson plan. That uh, what does it cost to uh, to apply? What does it cost to take? And are there study manuals uh, available? Yep. So um, a CLEP exam. When I was taking them, they were like eighty dollars a test, and now I think they're ninety. Um, and then there's a sitting fee, so like you have to go to a community college to take the test, um, and then you have to pay the community college like 30 bucks just to have them like proctor your exam. So yeah. you're paying pretty close to like 120, 130 bucks typically um, on each exam. Where if you pass, um, you're saving literally 2,900 dollars because the average college course costs about three grand. So right. So you're, if you fail a CLEP exam literally 27 times and pass on the 28th, you're still saving money. So <laughs> it, it's worth it. 
you've done the arithmetic. What are some, and here uh, our show is based, uh, uh, my practice is based out of uh, uh, Colorado, which uh, coincidental uh, Mason is too. Uh, for those of you that want to, uh, uh, want to pursue his coaching program, he does that virtually. So it, literally anyone that's listening. But what are some of the, uh, here in Colorado, I'm curious, what are some of the junior colleges that proctor the test? Um, I went to the Community College of Denver. Most community colleges have a proctoring uh, sec like area for them, but uh, yeah, Community College of Denver is where I was doing mine. Yeah, good, very good, very good. What's the uh, the difference when you look at the DSST, and which is primarily the junior senior classes in college? Do you see kids clap out of a lot of the uh, the 100, 200 classes, and then all of a sudden they seem to forget that they could be while they're in that in that college they could uh, test out? Yeah, I think. Well, I don't think DSSTs are really well known. Um, CLEP. I mean, most people don't even know about CLEP exams, but more people know about CLEP than DSST by like quite a lot. So. I think a lot of people just want to get their base courses out of the way so they can actually focus on their major. Um, so that's why CLEP exams are really nice because it gets you out of those first two years of redoing high school. Um, and then you can actually focus on the specific degrees. It's just, it's also harder to find study guides for DSST exams. Um, but I know of multiple websites, so modernstates.org, um, has just free video courses of college professors who teach lectures on each subject matter. So you can just watch the free video lectures and then go take the test. Good one. Good one. And again, that's the, uh, the graduate stuff, the DSST, junior, senior. And a lot of our listeners, a lot of my clients over all these years, holy cow, uh, they should have been focusing on some of these tests uh, in the last two years of college. But for some reason, um, some reason we don't. I, I think the big reason is that colleges don't really want to talk about it. Like it, when I was bringing this up to my college counselor, they they really wouldn't give me a lot of information about CLEP and DSST exams, even though they accepted so many of them. Because like if you think about it from their perspective, they're trying to get your money. So why would they take zero dollars over three thousand? And so this is why nobody knows about any of this stuff. Exactly. And here I'm, I'm typing in a uh, CLEP study test uh, on YouTube. Uh, so here are uh, seven best uh, resources. And again, we want to uh, emphasize uh, Mason helps with the lesson plan and he will help direct you to the study guides and, and other various things. But you're absolutely right. Holy cow, there, there are uh, just hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of, of classes online. Uh, I do remember a lot of our students over the years would go to College Board and they would buy the study material, which I do remember, and tell me if my memory serves me, Mason, they would have a lot of the test questions, sample questions in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's plenty of access to CLEP questions all over the Internet. Like, there's Quizlets made. There's, um, I mean, CLEP itself literally releases an earlier version of the test as a study guide. So you can buy the book for like 30 bucks and it has every single CLEP exam practice test in it. Um, and they're literal. So like if you're taking the test in 2022, they'll give you tests from 2020 and you can just take the literal test in there. It's a little different now, obviously, but it's, it's pretty much the same. And again, the passing grade is 70%. Yeah, 70%. And it, I also read an article some time back, and I need to put this into my uh, my weekly newsletter. And again, for those of you that are don't subscribe, again, you can go to collegefundingcoach.com, and at the top, click on newsletters. Uh, they're all of we've been doing newsletters for probably 30 years, 35 years, uh, and click in there. Give us your your uh, email address, and we'll be happy to put you on our our weekly college uh, newsletter or our, our monthly uh, wealth uh, management newsletter. I'm going to need to put in a, my upcoming newsletter that, and, and uh, Mason, you can elaborate on this. And, and here, what's the average graduation time? Have you been tracking uh, the progress of those numbers, graduation years? 
in average graduation time of people I've coached? Uh, no, well, no, we can get into that one. Just in general, uh, the people don't seem to graduate in four years anymore, do they? Uh, no, I've, I, I thought it was five years is what the yeah. average is. The average is a little over 5.2 years exactly. We'll come back to your coaching, but here's a great, uh, great article. Uh, passing the CLEP exam correlates, according to this article, with 5.5% increase in degree completion. This effort is notably stronger for, for groups that, uh, that have done CLEP tests. So that's pretty cool statistic. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, especially like it's, I mean, just with all of this right now, it's the student debt crisis just keeps going up and up. Um, just like to put in perspective, when I was making the pitch video for my documentary, um, oh. it took me a month to make. And when I first started it, I recorded the voiceover and we were at $1.7 trillion for the student debt crisis. And by the time I finished it, it had already surpassed 1.8 trillion. So I had to re record the voiceover to correct that. With this is within a month. Wow, yeah, it, it is frightening, and the amount of money that's being borrowed. And on our website, I, again, Mason and I want to make sure we highlight you. But on the front page of our website, on the left hand side, we just posted a new video. Is why is college so expensive? And and to hear those students. Uh, from the from their own mouse uh, talk about and the title is why college is so expensive in America and it's a video uh, it, it's just it, it's frightening to think the amount of um, just pure cost hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for a four-year degree I think even 150 on many of the public minimums um, it and so many people are now borrowing more than ever ever before uh, and that's a neat part of your subtitle, uh, Start Your Career Without Student Debt. Tell us a little more about that. Um, so for me, I I personally got my degree, like you said, in a year. Um, and I paid, I think it was 12000 at the time, but I was also not meticulous with it. Like, I know how to do it now, so you can do it for less. But because I saved so much money, I started, like, going after uh, jobs and stuff without having any debt and just – the as a teacher i um i worked one of my coworkers she's an art teacher and she had a hundred grand worth of student debt she was my age um and she was making my salary which wasn't that much like it was a teacher salary so we were making like forty thousand a year and so if she was to pay off her entirety of her student loan bill it'd take her upwards of 30 years just to just to get that out exactly we, uh, we do talk a lot about that in, in our software. Uh, we, we run those what-ifs. We do a with loans, without loans. Uh, we did have a, a podcast, encourage you to go and listen to that uh, on loans. Um, uh, I, I'm reading some more statistics uh, uh, from the College Board. And so it, the College Board really supports this. Uh, CLEP students perform better academically, higher GPA on average. Uh, better uh, course performance, students who attend a four-year college that, uh, that are CLEP testers typically do better on, on the, uh, all of their other classes. So studying for a CLEP test helps the student uh, develop their test-taking test abilities. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I, I felt like I actually learned way more studying for CLEP exams than I did in my college classes. <laughs> I like a lot too because with, with studying for the club exam I'm like watching documentaries I'm interested in the actual subject matter because it's it's completely on okay here's the test and it's completely psychology so here's all the psychology information you need and there's no pulling from that there's no weird papers you have to do you just have to know the information and so go learn as much about psychology as you can Exciting. And tell us again, comparing from your experience, and I noticed this part in, a little bit in your book, it, it, everyone is thrives and, and strives to, uh, uh, to get accepted into AP, and they go through all that process. Do you know any statistics on, on AP pass rates, AP not, test pass rates? Not at all, actually. Yeah, and, but you, from your experience, what's the difference in, uh, from your experience between a CLEP test and an AP test? Um, so an AP exam, you're going to spend a lot more time doing. Um, they're 
typically, I, I remember the ones that I took were like three hours, I think, or uh, three and a half hours, where a CLEP exam, I'm spending maybe an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, CLEP is all multiple choice. AP exam, you're going to have DBQs and, and, and essays and different things like that. Um, and a lot of times, like, if you're not a great writer, you're instantaneously going to be just docked points on the AP exam versus like it with a multiple choice answer, you, it's either right or it's wrong. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So it's just, it's very forward. But with CLEP as well, you take the test and you get your results immediately. So you, you take the test and it sends you right to the results page right afterwards and sends your CLEP results directly to your college. Whereas with an AP exam, I take it only in May. So I can only take the AP exam in May then I have to wait two to three months for my results on that, and then I have to personally send those results to my college. Very good. That's a great, a great point, and we've, we've told students, don't forget to transfer your AP. Don't make sure that when, you're, when you're interviewing and you're touring the school to make sure they accept the AP. Get it in writing that they accept AP. I don't want to bash uh, the uh, AP or the classes or the test or the transferability of those units. But to, again, uh, to hear you say, uh, it's all automatic. Uh, it's all automatic to, uh, to the schools that you list. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, uh, 34 different exams that cover a number of uh, introductory level examinations. Uh, were some of those tests that you took easier than others? Oh, absolutely. I, I did terrible at the calculus test because I don't know math. Um, but like psychology, I mean, the, the marketing exam, I, I worked in marketing at a martial arts school. So I didn't even study for that one. I just went and took the test and I passed. Um, like there's, there's a lot of tests like that where I, you kind of know a lot of the information already from high school or from other things like the U.S. history exams, um, both of those, it was basically my U.S. history class in, in high school, just retaking it. It wasn't as even as hard as an AP U.S. history exam. Very good. Uh, we will be putting in an e a special um, um, newsletter, uh, which we're going to entitle uh, CLEP Test, How to Save uh, One Year Cost of College. And we're going to uh, make sure that we have all of the links in that, uh, uh, that uh, newsletter uh, how to get in touch with Mason. Uh, one of the things that we will put in that uh, in the, a link is where uh, College Board you will all they ask for is the name of your school or the code. Uh, you can search uh, with with a drop down uh, as to whether that specific cool school accepts uh, CLEP tests, uh, and then again uh, how to transfer those. And again, it lists all 34, American government being a common one. Uh, college algebra, would you agree, uh, Mason, would be a, a good one for everybody to focus on? So when I did college algebra, I also took pre-calculus and college mathematics all on the same day because they're literally the exact same test. Mm -hmm. uh, so I studied for a little bit of math, took all three tests in one day, um, and passed all three because it was it was. Just it was basically like confined, but it get, got me nine credit hours um, from one day worth of work. Wow! Plus the study time, and and again the materials uh, and whatnot. So uh, and, yes, and English literature is another common one that people test out of. Co college algebra is very similar to pre-calculus. So if you took pre-calculus in high school, you can pretty much just go take it. Gotcha. Humanity. Uh, I. I uh, I noticed they, uh, they've added more, uh, or go ahead, I interrupted you. Go ahead, finish your thought. I didn't, you didn't interrupt me. Go oh, ahead. It, it had a little bit of over. Uh, uh, French, uh, German, I noticed Spanish isn't in there anymore. Oh, it's not. They got rid of Spanish. I didn't know that. Ah, I didn't know that either. History, another one, systems, introductory, biz, business, uh, social, oh, no, no, there it is. It's towards, I didn't scroll down far enough. Spanish, uh, language. did you take any of the uh, language tests? I took German and French. Um, so with German, I originally I started learning German just to take the CLEP exam because they're 12 credit hours of transfer if you pass at the upper level, which would be like an 80%. Um, 
Um, so I was like, okay, I might as well just try to get out of semester college. Um, I used Duolingo for like nine months and then I just went and took the German exam and I passed. And then, uh, I did the same thing with the French exam. Good for you. Good for you. Tell us a little bit about how you're helping, uh, uh, kids in the inner city, uh, test out of classes and save money. I think that's admirable. So I'm, I'm working with uh, a school system called DSST Schools, uh, Denver Science and Technology. I did work uh, for them as a teacher last year, uh, but this next year there's about, I think there's 16 schools in total in, in the whole branch, I would call it, I guess, um, but all a part of DSS, the DSST network, there's 16 schools. And so I'm going to be bouncing and doing an after-school program with each of the schools um, to basically set them up with all of this so they can start testing in high school out of um, any CLEP exams they want to so that when they go off to college, they can just transfer them in. Very good. Uh, Mason, that's very admirable, and, and that's one reason I chose you to be our uh, for this podcast. I, I've been wanting to talk about CLEP uh, for some time. We did a radio show uh, about it uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, my hat's off to you for what you're doing to help uh, people save money to go to college. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, tell us a little bit about, the, and we have a lot of, of uh, students that are military. Tell us a little bit about uh, the military benefits. Do you have any expertise on that? I don't have a lot of expertise. I do know um, that if you are currently in the military, they offer club exams for free. Uh, so they, like, you can literally just go take them. Um, one of my, the people I work with on all of this is, his name is Mark. Um, but he's, he's a Marine and he basically just goes and takes CLEP exams because they're free for him. And he doesn't even study for them. He just goes and takes them, uh, to see what it's like. And, and he, he doesn't pass like with flying colors because he doesn't study, but he still passes a, a decent amount of them. Yeah, that's through Dante's, D-A-N-T-E-S. Uh, the Veterans Administration has a joint venture with them. So any of the veterans that are listening should take advantage of that. Again, we encourage our students, our podcast listeners, to study, be prepared. Uh, it is $89 for the entrance plus the, the exam plus the proctor cost. But, uh, and, and uh, give us some advice, Mason, on making sure we don't wait. Start taking as many of these classes in sophomore, junior year in high school? Is that what your advice would be? I, I would say absolutely yes, they're easy enough to. Um, I think a lot of people get in their heads about how intense a test might be or, or just something like it, that it's, it's going to be this difficult task because they always say that with AP exams, like, oh, it's, it's just such a hard class or whatever. But when it comes to a CLEP exam, like I said, almost every single one of those tests – I studied for maybe four days for and passed. So it, they're not, if you, if you're pat, like, like going to focus on it, if you're going to spend a few hours every day, you can easily do it in a week. But if you, if you feel more comfortable taking a month to take a test, you, you easily can be prepared. Very good. Good advice. And again, there's pamphlets available from College Board. There's uh, free videos uh, uh, on uh, YouTube and other places. Uh, CLEP's been around for 50 years, and the colleges understand its importance, and a lot of uh, cottage industry uh, has has popped up on how to prepare, study, take that test, get that 70%, and again, don't give up. Go back again if if you need to, uh, and again, what are you saving on average per unit when you do that? Um, If, like, per test, if you take... And pass on the first time, you're saving about $2,900. Yeah, good. I wanted to have you repeat that. Uh, how long do the tests uh, typically take? What amount of time do they give you? Um, I think they give you two and a half hours. I would only It only ever took me an hour and a half. Great. Yeah, the statistics is it typically takes uh, 90 to 120 minutes to take the test. Uh, and, again, you look at you. You did, uh, what's your record, three in one day? Um, yeah, for the math classes, because they're, they're literally all the same. Pre-calculus, college math, and college algebra are the, literally the exact same test. Very good. Very good. So what else, what other, other advice, uh, 
Could you uh, give the our listeners and then tell us a little bit about your private coaching program? Uh, yeah, so for private coaching, I offer a couple different options. Um, I do a degree setup, which is uh, much more like one-on-one. -on -one. This is we'll meet for a few sessions, and I'll set you up with the best college to go to to save as much money as possible. Um, that will get you as many credits transferred over. So if there, there's certain schools that accept 90, 90 credit transfer hours to 100 credit, 120 credit transfer hours. So I will set you up with every test you need to take to test out of as many classes as possible. Um, and then I'll have a, a whole sheet like ready for you to go to basically just go get started. Normally this takes about two sessions. Um, and then uh, every single person I've ever had for coaching in the past just goes off on their own after that and they don't really need me anymore. Um, but you can still contact me after the fact because of this upper price. Um, this is a thousand dollars I charge for that. And then I also charge for private uh, solo sessions of coaching of just $250 for an hour. Perfect. And again, we encourage everybody that's listening to, uh, to hire Mason for, uh, and he's agreed to uh, work with our clients, our, our clients and our podcast listeners uh, for the first session uh, at $250. And that first session lasts typically how, how many minutes? About an hour, 60 minutes. And they can accomplish a lot. And then if they want to pursue and really develop the, uh, the actual goal of uh, what school, uh, what will be accepted. And again, we want to, as, as you listeners are, hire me. And again, we come from the perspective, if we're not helping you, uh, pay for one semester, uh, two semesters, a whole year of college. We're not doing our job right. But again, uh, Mason comes from a, a, a perspective of uh, what can you test out of and here's how much you will save. Uh, what other bits of advice could you give and uh, then tell us a little bit more about your documentary and, and, I'll, and I'll link that through in this email for everybody. Um, so a few pieces of advice if you're going to go take a CLEP exam. Um, get really good at how to eliminate multiple choice answers. Um, in other words, if you read the question and you have four options or five options, eliminate the two that are just obviously not correct first. And then you have three options left. So you have a 33% chance of just getting it right by guessing. Um, and honestly, that strategy took me through most of my testing. Um, <laughs> just knowing that certain questions are just absolutely not correct. Um, outside of that, uh, any advice I could give is just go take tests. Don't overthink it. Just keep going. If you don't pass, you don't pass, you move on. And just, just keep cranking them out. Don't overthink any of it. Um, I, I love it. I love it. Keep, keep going. I don't mean you to yeah. As far as the uh, documentary goes, um, I'm working to basically get this information on a, on a very large scale um, because what I've just been doing is bouncing from podcast to podcast and posting on YouTube. And so the goal of the documentary is to send this to every major film festival in the United States, um, just talking about how to test out of your bachelor's degree, where I will literally outline the exact way that I did it and how to do it step by step throughout the documentary. And then the goal is I'm starting a crowdfunding page, um, which has been raised. A, it's raised a little bit of money so far, but not a lot. Um, but whatever I can get for that is what I can use to send this film off to film festivals. There's 4,000 film festivals in the United States. And at each of those, there's anywhere from 200 to 1,000 people watching the film who are involved in the film industry. So ultimately, the goal would be to sell it to a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu or something like that. Um, Good for you, Mason. Thank you. Um, but whatever I can raise for the Indiegogo, if you would be willing to donate, um, I the, it's the more places I can send it to. I can just and I'll put it, that, we can talk a little bit more about that. I'll put that in the uh, uh, in the uh, newsletter. Uh, again, we really appreciate you uh, offering a discount for the first session. Again, I think this is money well spent for a dollar spent and. Uh, $250 spent and perhaps $2,900 minimum uh, dollars saved. And by the way, I wanted to make a comment, Mason, that uh, I, I, I'm smiling. 
uh, where the parents that's listening might be thinking, my kids need to study. They, they, what do you mean eliminate the first two answers you know on the multiple choice that aren't correct and, and then you can guess, that's not what I want for my student. And then the students that are listening are thinking, hot dog, you mean I can, I can study a few hours, take the test, get a 70%, try again if I don't. Um, again, we recognize that testing out of something uh, is a process. Uh, again, you said it just a few minutes ago, you learned a lot through studying for these tests. And maybe you learned more studying for a club test than you did for the AP test. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Um, with, with the AP exam, I think it gives this pressure to it, especially because you have the writing portions of I have to get every single aspect of this perfect. And if I don't get it perfect, I'm going to fail. And that's just kind of, uh, they kind of instill that mindset into you in high school, too, of, like, how intense AP exams are. AP exams are harder than the college course itself. And that's been the case every single time I've ever taken an AP exam and taken a college course. It, I've never had a college course that was harder than an AP test. The CLEP exam, the thing that's nice about it is that it, it's lighter and it's not as intense. And like you were saying that, this is, again, a testing strategy, eliminate the wrong answers. It's not like what's the color of the sky and red is one of the options. They're complex questions. So to eliminate the, the wrong answers, you still have to know the material pretty well. Um, it's just a good strategy to utilize in order to pass more efficiently. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Uh, our, uh Mason, thanks again for uh, being our being our guest this this uh, podcast. Absolutely, this is, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So our, our podcast guest has been Mason Aximit, uh, the author of uh, the One Year Diploma. Again, it's available on Amazon.com. We're going to uh, include many of these links, including the uh, special promotion that. Uh, uh, Mason has offered to you podcast and to our clients two hundred and fifty dollars for the first uh, the first hour of the first session. I think it will be well worth it. Uh, thanks a million again, uh, Mason, and thanks for uh, for sharing such great concepts with our guests. Absolutely, thanks for having me on. You, my pleasure. Uh, thank you all for joining us. My name is Jeff Moran. I'm a certified college planner. Uh, we are. Uh, here to help you any uh, way that uh, you may need. Go to our website, collegefundingcoach.com, and at the top, you'll see um, uh, schedule a meeting. Please click on that, uh, and we'll be more than happy to meet with you. Again, be on the lookout for uh, for the links for uh, for this podcast show. It's on the front page of our website, as well as a specific newsletter where we're going to highlight uh, Mason and what he's doing. Uh, Mason, thanks again for being our guest. Thanks for having me, Jeff. We hope you've enjoyed the collegefundingcoach.com podcast with Jeff Moran. Please visit our website, collegefundingcoach.com. Click on the events tab for our upcoming workshops and click on schedule meeting. We would be happy to visit with you. For over 40 years, our goal is to help you reach yours.